I constantly feel like I'm either too vegan for people or not vegan enough. I get a lot of people asking me why I decided to go vegan, and this is gonna be my attempt at explaining that to you all. Honestly, if you were to ask me five years ago if I would ever be vegan, I would have said, hell no. Growing up, I was a huge meat lover, huge meat eater. My mother was always vegetarian, but she sort of let me eat whatever I wanted. I would always go to my grandmother and grandfather's house to get my meat fix, if you will. <laughs> Bacon, chicken, especially fried chicken, steak, the fat was my favorite part. Hot dogs, there was one summer that every morning I had hot dogs for breakfast, which probably shaved a few years off my life. This being said, I also had every pet you can imagine growing up. I had dogs, I had cats, I had hamsters, I had guinea pigs, we had chickens, I had a horse. Oh, I had a tarantula at one point. My mom is a licensed wildlife rehabilitator, so I saw wildlife all the time as well. We rescued a possum one time, I named him Clark. There were animals everywhere in my life growing up. Then, after college, I got my first job at BuzzFeed. Yay, you know BuzzFeed. And through that, I ended up working at Tasty. It wasn't until I was making content that millions and millions of people were viewing and sharing and making that I actually started thinking about what I was eating. I remember learning that it takes like 2,000 gallons of water to produce one pound of beef and being like, okay, so if I'm using one pound of beef in my video and one million people share it and 50 million people view it, even 2,000 people make it, that's a lot of water and I feel responsible for it. I started getting really paranoid about it and one weekend I decided to watch the documentary Cowspiracy. The major takeaway from this documentary was that factory farming contributes heavily to climate change and that scares the living shit out of me. I am so afraid of climate change that I have had several mental breakdowns about it and I think we're all probably a little guilty of getting to the point where like okay we're already this far down the rabbit hole like what can we actually do? It feels very overwhelming and suffocating but then I learned things like factory farming contributes to climate change more than all forms of transportation combined and is also responsible for deforestation, pollution, and carbon emissions. And I have to think, if I can control what I eat in an indirect way, I'm sort of helping. I'm not saying I'm saving the world, but there is power in that choice. I'm getting really excited, I'm feeling really powerful. I'm like, okay, I can make a positive change. I'm gonna go vegetarian, I'm just gonna do it. I'm all excited, I'm telling everyone at work, and you know, they're like pretending to be happy for me. And I get one weekend, seven days, no meat, after eating meat with every meal, pretty much. I get home from work, and there's this massive 50 pound cooler of meat that my grandfather sent to me very sweetly as a nice gesture of like, you know, you, this is your first job, you don't have any money yet. And I was like, <laughs> what the am I supposed to do now? I'm talking steak, sausage, chicken, salmon, clams, like every kind of meat. I don't even know how they fit it into this cooler. Yes, I could have given it to my roommate, but I ate it because it was meat. I thought of it as like a goodbye package to meat. And two months later, <laughs> the cooler was finished and then I never ate meat again. My work was doing well, I was really proud of myself, and I was enjoying being a vegetarian. It didn't feel too bad, but I'll be honest, I was housing cheese like the best of them. I probably doubled up on dairy as a replacement for meat. While I was shooting my Tasty videos, I would eat an entire ball of mozzarella cheese sometimes. That's another thing, and I agree with people when they say it. Just because you're going vegan and vegetarian doesn't necessarily mean you're healthier. You have to be aware and really research what you're eating so you can still have a balanced diet. That being said, just because you're eating meat doesn't mean you're healthy either. No matter what your diet is, do your research. Okay, so but why did you go vegan? Let's get to the point here. I was in Montreal walking through the old port and that's when I see the Cube of Truth. The Cube of Truth is coordinated by a street action group called Anonymous for the Voiceless. They're all standing in a cube-like formation wearing all black and wearing Guy Fox masks and they're screening factory farm footage. And they don't speak, they just hold it there and they stand like that. We know what this footage looks like. It's kind of like the ASPCA commercials, right? You hear Sarah McLaughlin's voice and you automatically, your mind like goes to those shivering dogs. Nobody wants to watch it. It makes you sad, you don't feel good. I knew I had purposely avoided watching footage like this, but I could not look away. And after a little while, I was approached by a member. They were unmasked and he just came up to me 
very unaggressively and was just like, do you have any questions about what you're watching? I told him that I was vegetarian, almost in like a braggadocious way. Like I may as well have winked at this man and been like, don't worry, I'm one of you. I was expecting like a pat on the back or something. And then he like smiled and very gently asked, have you ever considered going vegan? In my mind, I'm like, I don't eat meat. So like, I'm not part of the problem here, right? Wrong. He very politely said, you know the footage that you're watching right now is from a dairy farm. And I'm like, oh God, please don't take the cheese. The cheese is all I have left. But I decided to hear him out. He said, these cows are repeatedly impregnated and then they give birth and then their babies are taken away and they're either slaughtered or they're raised as veal. They're impregnated repeatedly for as many years as they can give birth until they're too weak and then they're slaughtered. It almost felt like all of the good work I thought I had done leading up to that point meant nothing because I felt like I had been eating more cheese than ever, which is a totally unhealthy way to think because we're all doing our best here. So then I just asked him, what about eggs? Like, I love eggs. Laying hens are okay, right? <laughs> no. The man very kindly and patiently pointed at a screen and he showed me this thing that's called chick culling where thousands of male chicks are tossed into this giant like grinder, kind of like a wood chipper. We raise chickens for one specific purpose. We have laying hens that are raised to just pump out hundreds of eggs over time. And then we have broiler chickens. And broiler chickens are bred to grow to this humongous size, basically within one month of living. All of this to say that the male chicks of layer hens there's really nowhere for them to fit into this because they're too small to be broiler chickens and they can't lay eggs. So they're basically useless to these farmers and that's why they're all killed. Now I was actually angry because I was like, how did I possibly miss this? Cause I was kind of like, how do I not know this? Like, why don't I have this information available to me? And he was like, listen, I know it can feel really overwhelming. And if you feel like you want to try the 22 day vegan challenge that we offer, here's our card. And so I took the card. I like didn't look at the man anymore. And I like stomped off. That's where the first little spark of inspiration to be vegan started. I figured why not just attempt being vegan? At least that way I can say I tried and if it doesn't work out, I can feel good about myself. And as like an added inspiration, I decided to document the entire journey because I wanted to be held accountable for actually doing this. So every single day I would document exactly what I ate for breakfast, for lunch, and for dinner. Obviously not everybody has time to cook and prepare every meal that they're gonna eat. It's a matter of just doing as well as you can. I will say it challenged me a lot as a cook because I feel like before I would always just add cheese to things so that it would taste good. I also found that if I had like a really bad hankering for something, I could usually find a vegan substitute for it. I know, vegan substitutes are never gonna be exactly the same. Some are better than others, but if there's like a day where you really want a sausage or something that reminds you of a sausage, you can find a vegan chorizo that's gonna like scratch that itch, at least for me. Within the first two weeks, I started to feel really, really good. I like could feel myself having a lot more energy and I just felt lighter. So after 22 days of doing the vegan challenge, I decided I wanted to stick with it. I felt so good that I was like, why not? Like, why not just actually give this a shot? The most difficult thing about being vegan, honestly, for me, is the extreme culture that surrounds it. I constantly feel like I'm either too vegan for people or not vegan enough. When I first started being vegan, I would say, you know, I'm vegan, I would tell people about it. But now I just like to only really explain it when I have to or if people ask me questions. And I'd prefer to say like I practice veganism or I eat more plant-based because vegan is what I eat, but it's not who I am. I also hate that there's all this pressure to like never slip up. It feels like if you slip up, you're out of the club. I slip up, I've slipped up multiple times. And sometimes if I'm like at a wedding and there's no vegan option and all I have that I can eat are vegetables, maybe those vegetables were cooked in butter. I need something in my stomach because I'm gonna be there for eight hours and I'm gonna drink wine. If that means I'm not in the club, then I don't wanna be in the club. I think the, the real passion for me is to try to stop supporting factory farming. For instance, sometimes when I'm back home, I'm from a very small town, my neighbor has rescue chickens that have like been pulled from factory farms. And those chickens naturally lay eggs. And sometimes I eat those eggs. And if that means I'm not vegan 100%, I'm fine with that. Cue the comment, why I'm vegan, I'm not vegan. I'm sure there are a lot of people that are vegan that have never slipped up and I'm very proud of them. I don't tell you these things to try to encourage you not to do your best if a vegan diet is really important to you. I tell you these things so that you know that 
if you can't do 100%, or even if you don't want to do 100%, you're not weak and you're not less than. You just do your best. Ultimately, it's better to set a reasonable, realistic goal for yourself than to set this crazy, unreachable goal that's just gonna get you frustrated and make you quit. It is not too late for the planet. Having no hope is just as useless as being a climate change denier. And I've been guilty of that myself. Every day, we can vote with our wallets, and with that, we can create change. So support industries that you believe in and just do your best with what you have every day. And don't be so hard on yourself.